Hello dear friends, how you are doing today? Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Cloud with Mopsi. Friends, if you remember, uh, last session we covered uh, IPv4 and IPv6 and uh, the major differences, their format and how we can transition, okay? So today's is a hands-on lab and what we are going to do is we are going to configure a VPC for IPv6. Uh, the subnet as well will configure and will assign the auto assign IPv6 address. Then we will launch some of the EC2 instances inside that. And let's see how we can communicate to the EC2 instances using IPv6. Okay. So this is going to be a very interesting and we will have lots of fun. And don't forget, we will also, uh, you know, I'm going to do some of the uh, a quick tips that if you are working with the VPC so the small step that can help you so please watch this video till the end and without wasting your time let's get started as you can see on my screen I have logged into my AWS management console okay and I'm in the Mumbai region so you can choose the region that you find that is suitable first of all I will go to VPC and to just begin with, uh, I will uh, deploy a new VPC that is virtual private cloud. And after uh, deploying that, then we will configure it with respect to the IPv6. Okay. So if you are new and uh, new to my channel, you can watch my video on what is VPC and uh, the associated things you will get to learn. And then you can probably watch this video. Okay. Now you can see I have one VPC that is a default one. Uh, everyone has uh, you know a default VPC in their accounts per feature. I will just click on create VPC. So this time in the, my previous session we use VPC only. Okay, so this is something like this time I will show you the VPC and more options. So this is you can say it will do the preview. Okay so it will be the vpc we can do the name and it will create the submits as you can see based on the region so mine is ap south one that is mumbai region it will create the subnet so obviously it will create two public subnet and two or two private subnet in each availability zone and with the route table as well as you can see so that we are going to do uh, let me just give it as a name like uh, s01 lab okay cider ipv4 cider i will just keep as it is okay and for now i will go with no ipv6 because we can configure it once this is deployed tenancy let me put the default one we have other options like dedicated as well i will stuck to the default setting okay number of availability zone let me choose two uh, public submit two private submit two no uh, not get rid because not i am I'm not going to the NAT gateway as well as VPC endpoints, I will set it as none. Okay, so VPC endpoint is something like uh, it can help reduce the NAT gateway charges. Okay, so we will cover in the upcoming session uh, basically the, the like types like uh, interface endpoints as well as gateway endpoints that we'll see in the upcoming slides. And additional tags, I don't want to assign any tags, and I will just click on create. You can see it has fast, uh, you know, created. It's uh, quickly these all things has been created using VPC and more. Okay, so what it has created, it has created this VPC. It has enabled the DNS host name as well as DNS resolution. Okay, uh, as we have requested, it has created four subnets: two public and two private subnets. It also assigned internet gateway for us and to attach it to the VPC and also added to the route table. Okay. So we will see all those things in detail. I will just click on the VPC. So you can see this is the VPC and here IPv6 pool as well as IPv6 uh, right now it's not assigned. Okay, so we will see how that can be done. Okay. Now see this is the VPC that we have newly created. One from here we can see for IPv6 header it is black and it has the default one that is 10 16 as by custom uh, we have selected that. So how we will configure the IPv6 is uh, we need to select this uh, VPC go to actions 
and click on edit side up now uh, i was talking about some quick tips see you can see we already have ipv4 cider as 10 triple zero 16 that is showing as associated and there's a remove button that is <coughs> sorry it's uh it's rem uh, it's disabled so it means we cannot remove the associated ip address once that is associated but we can add, add an additional new ip before cider okay that is something is very interesting here now talking about ipv6 right now it's showing me as you have no ipv6 cider block associated okay i can click on add new ipv6 cider it is giving me three options one is ipam allocated ipv6 cider block amazon provided ipv6 cider block and ipv6 cider owned by me if i say choose first and third it is something as asking me to choose the pool and right now i don't have any ipv6 pool Hence, we cannot use this at the moment. Same is true about this one. Okay, there is no pool. Hence, I will go with the Amazon provided IPv6 cider block. Okay, and network uh, border group. It is basically related to the region that is Mumbai region right now. Okay, so you can see it will uh, associate with a, all the three availabilities one that is one a one b and one c in this ap south one that is mumbai region okay so i will just select this one and now you can see succeeded associating ipv6 cider so we have this ipv6 cider that has been associated and from the pool as amazon pool as you can see okay so uh, now what will be the next thing is if i go back say here if i scroll to my right i can see now it's uh, this is the cider and it is slash 56 okay so in my previous session we covered what is the format of ipv6 so you can watch that video in, in detail you understand what is that okay now the next thing is let me switch to the subnets and yeah so see if you don't see uh, any subnet just you know ensure you will refresh it because sometimes you will see the previous subnet only not the newly created one so you can need to refresh it let me just you know sort it using vpc there is a button here we can sort according to the vpc okay and these are the four subnet as i mentioned it is uh, we have two public subnets in each availability zone that is ap south 1a and ap south 1b as well as two private subnet in each availability zone this is for high availability purpose okay now what we need to do is again you can see uh, ipv6 cider is not assigned okay so we need to assign it manually so how we can do it we can select this subnet group actions and click on edit ipv6 cider okay here we have a button add ipv6 cider just click on that and here it will choose it will automatically pick up that is ipv6 cider of that vpc that is this one that we had uh, we got from amazon and here for the subnet what i'll do is see this ranges from 00 to ff so let me go with the 00 here and subnet is uh, you can say a subset of vpc so i will go for I should go for or I will use slash 64 at the subnet okay and I will click on save you can see I have successfully assigned it and now it may show us, us, us here okay so it is the available IPv4 addresses are 4091 okay as it's showing here now again I will do for the remaining one or public as well uh, public to submit ipv6 and here it is 00, 00 i use i will go for 01 and so slash 64 save okay similarly i will go for my private as well so let me go for private submit it is IP6 ciders add I will 0001 we have used let me go for 02 and 64 and 
now the one that is left is private too. Okay, so again I will go to actions, edit IPv6 headers, add IPv6 header. Zero zero or zero zero done zero one zero two and now it is zero three. Okay, uh, okay. Part of sixty four has submit. Okay. okay. Now another tip I would like to give you. See, we have used uh, VPC and more options. So here, what it does is, by default, uh, the public that IPv6 is not enabled by default. Okay, so we need to edit it manually, so that whenever we launch any resources into that subnet, say EC2 instance, if we wish to launch inside to subnet, we'll get auto assign IPv6. So we will do it for the public IP addresses only. We won't go uh, and do that for the private IP addresses. Now I will select public IP address that is public one. Uh, this one. I will choose this subnet. Go to actions. Click on edit subnet setting. Okay. And here you can see option enable auto assign IPv6 address. Enable auto assign IPv4 address. So this is with respect to public IP address. I will choose both okay and click on save so because of this next time we launch any resources inside that will get us automatically the public and private uh, public ip addresses for ipv4 as well as ipv6 i'll do the same for my public 2 that is another subnet let me select this one go to actions click on edit subnet setting here auto assign ip setting i will just select both of them okay and click on save so that's it okay so we are done now what will be the next step is let's see the route table that is you know uh, what is the route table associated with this and what are the changes inside that or routes inside that route tables i'll click on route tables and again let me just filter it out using the vpc okay as you can see these are the VPCs. Okay, this is our ms one lab VPC. This is our VPC. And here, what it has done is, this had, uh, it has created these many route tables. Okay, let me just begin with this one. That is the name that state RTB public. I'll click on this route table. And here you can see we have <coughs> these entries. So it is zero 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 slash zero. Okay, so this is with respect to internet, uh, internet gateway that it has assigned. This is ten triple zero slash sixteen. This is for IPv IPv four cider, and this is local. You can say okay. So for the internal traffic, and this one that it has automatically added. This is our IPv six, and again that is local. Okay, and for IPv six, what we need to do is we need to edit this route add route okay and what we can do is simply 00, zero colon slash zero so this belongs to our ipv6 okay this one is for ipv4 and this one for ipv6 that we need to add and what should be the target should be its internet gateway okay so let me select internet gateway and click on save changes so now we are good as you can see our route looks good now so we have public IP uh, the IPv4 as well as IPv6 uh, local addresses and as well as internet for internet as well we have this one 000 slash 0 for IPv4 and for IPv6 as well okay now let's also take a look of route tables of the private subnets let's go back okay and you can see we have the route table with the name private inside their name. So, okay. so I will click on either of that. Let me select on this one route table. And as you can see, in this we won't see any uh, route for our internet gateway because if you know uh, the the private IP address is something that it you know it does not have any access to or any direct access to you can say to the internet because of that it is um, only path to the local IP addresses that is internal and uh, it do, do not have you know, internet gateway as part of the route table okay because of that it is private so if you want your resources to be private uh, and you know, should not access or public uh, or internet then you can 
deploy it inside the private subnets okay i hope this is clear now what we are going to do is we will uh, launch ec2 instances inside our public subnets okay and let's see how you know we are getting the ipv6 addresses and how we can communicate with them i will now switch to ec2 and okay i uh, will just give you one one more tip okay i hope most of you will be aware this is very small tip however uh, see if you want you know uh, some of the services to be listed on the top or in your favorite services what you can do is simply you can see here you can see just select it and click on it you know, uh, as star so that will appear as your favorite services and uh, every time you don't need to go and search those services okay so as you can see these are the star ones um, i have marked hence these are appearing on the top here okay so that i can easily access it in a very uh, like efficient manner so i can click on ec2 now let's launch two ec2 instances one in each public subnet and then we will try to communicate with them using uh, uh, let's try to you know use ipv6 so click on instances click on launch instances let me give as server 01 something like that the micro is fine you can i can click proceed without a keypad because we are not going to okay all right let's go with this one then for the network setting by default it will choose the default vpc we are going to use our custom vpc so edit choose our custom vpc and here we need to ensure we need to deploy in the public subnet so okay because of that you will see the difference here it will be the auto assign public ip address anyone as well as for the ipv6 as well it's enabled because why because uh, this has done is because we had edited the subnet setting to auto assign it okay now let me click on create security group and let's say as um, ipv6 something like that ipv6 sg just you know to understand and for now i will just go with the default inbound security rules and uh, yeah i'll click on launch instance you can see it has successfully launched the instance South one okay. Let me launch another instance in another subnet. Launch instance. Let me do it as server zero two. Okay. Twenty two micro is fine. Proceed with the keypad. Do network setting edit go for this custom vpc and this time i will go for another public subnet that is in ip south one you can see auto sign ips are enabled and i will click on select the existing one so i will select the existing that is we just created in the previous step and click on launch So right now our both of the EC2 instances are being initiated. You can see the status check is initializing and now you can see the difference. We have public IPv4 address. Along with that we also got the uh, IPv6 addresses as well for both of these EC2 instances. 
let's wait uh, for you know, both of these instances to get initialized they will do the checks the status checks will be done and then we will be having both in ec2 instances you can see this has passed the checks and the another one is getting initialized so let's give it a couple of seconds or minutes you can see very impatient with EC2 instances launching <laughs> sometimes I should, you know sometimes I used to wish okay as soon as I refresh it and uh, that's that's there for you so, but believe me see when we have if you remember the earlier times when we needed any server so we need we need to get lots of steps like get approvals provision the hardware network storage lots of things okay and then maybe it could be probably months i would say weeks or months that we can we have requested any server a physical server say so this is before uh, aws and the cloud uh, ec2 instances are there for our help but earlier the things were very different it was killing our patients but these days you can see within few clicks we have our ec2 instances running for us so that's what i really like about it, uh, the cloud world. so it's still initializing okay so new time what i will do is i will just try to connect on this one that is server one so you can select this one click on connect EC2 instance connect and I will just click on connect. Okay. Here you can see public IP and private IP have been listed. Okay, we can also give IPv6 as primary. This is IPv4. Okay. You can see just uh, I'll just show you. one you can see this is private IP address 10 0 29 this is a private IP address so we can give the uh, IPv6 as well as primary okay. that we can do uh, for that I'll just show you if I'm not wrong what we need to do for that one just click on that particular server with actions login manage ip addresses click on this is your interface that is virtual interface okay and you can see assign primary ipv6 address so it makes the first ipv6 address that is assigned to the network interface primary ipv6 okay so once that is assigned it cannot be uh, unassigned that it's it that you can do you can explore that okay now what i wanted to show is see we have another server as well already for us and it has this prior uh, this has ipv6 okay so let me just move it down just can copy it from here okay. now I will just try to ping the another server you can either use ping or ping sys basically see ping is when you uh, normally the devices with IPv4 and ping 6 is when the devices is having IPv6 so let me paste the IPv6 and you see and you can see our ping is not working and we can see it's, uh, it's not going ahead uh, do you know what could be the reason of this one any you know why this is not going we have everything it's uh, under same vpc everything same so basically if you 
if you know or if you are aware basically what we need to do is for ping to work in the security group we need to add IC, uh, ICMP protocol okay that is specifically for ping we will have uh, SSS only if you remember only we added SSS but not other protocols so let me go back to security okay and in the security you can see uh, this is our security group okay and here we have SSH only we do the ICMP I will click on edit inbound add rule here we need to select all ICMP and this is all ICMP is IPv4 okay now I will just select this one and let me click on now we have inbound security groups this will be modified for IP with ICMP okay. now let us try let me just refresh this now let's try to ping the other server ping 6 now you can see we have already added the security group here for ICMP v4 uh, sorry ICMP v6 but still we it's not moving do you know what could be the reason for this one so I'll tell you see let's go back to the security group and we have added this one all ICMP v4 uh, or sorry all ICMP uh, IP v6 and this protocol okay but the source is you can say 000 slash 0 and uh, if you know for IPv6 we need to do colon colon 0 so I can go to add rule again click on all ICMP IPv6 here we need to select this one so for IPv6 and if we need to know the connectivity to internet we need to do colon colon slash 0 and I will just click on Settings. Now it has been added. Now let's go to EC2 install internet. And now you can see. Now it's successfully able to ping the other uh, server over its IPv6 uh, address. Okay. Same. Let's try to do vice versa. From server two, let's try to connect server one. Okay. So let me just note the IPv6 of this one. I will just copy it, connect server to using EC2 instance connect and I will click on connect. Yeah. Now we can do uh, you either ping 6 and then uh, IPv6 address or we can also do ping uh, IPv6 address and iPhone 6 both where we can so you can see our uh, other server so both servers are able to ping each other okay that means uh, our IPv6 address the communication or traffic is being enabled okay so friends uh, that's what I wanted to show you in today's video like how we can to um, use the IPv6 addresses and we can do you know some more uh, experiment as well with respect to this and once you are done what you can do is just ensure you are uh, cleaning the resources see for VPC uh, we want to be quick charges just for running VPC but the resources inside that like EC2 install if you kept running so there will be some charges that will be incurred based on the instance type the you know your region and what is the how many the duration that you are running if there is an elastic IP addresses that you are assigned and see a very interesting uh, thing about uh, elastic IP addresses is elastic IP addresses basically uh, I'll show you see if I click on the elastic IPs this is nothing but uh, a type of public IP address only and you will be charged your for the elastic IP addresses when you are not using it. Means say you have allocated an elastic IP addresses to an EC2 instance, 
and you have stopped your ec2 instance or you have terminated your ec2 instance and the elastic ip address is not released so it's there still so because of that when it's not being used then aws will charge you it's not about you know when you are being uh, when you are using elastic ip address but when you are not using you will be charged so that is about it so i uh, we can clean it uh, all the resources how we can do is we can go to the vpc okay first step first step will be go to ec2 instance and terminate your ec2 instances okay as soon as you are explored so let me go to our ec2 instances we can select both them click on instance state and click on terminate instance it will ask for the confirmation i will just click on terminate so our ec2 instance are will be terminated okay you can see the it's getting shutting down then it will get terminated now i will go to vpc and we can i know uh, we need to delete our custom vpc as well that whatever we just use i will select this one click on actions and click on delete vpc i can see it is showing me delete unable to delete this is because our ec2 instances are not yet fully terminated okay because of that it's giving me this error simply i can refresh it I'll give some it some more time so that ECT instances are terminated and now I'll do it another time. It's still giving me this error. Let me see our instances are terminated. Okay, so those are terminated. Now we are good to delete. Options and delete. When these interfaces are used and these interfaces are being used by our EC2 instances. Let's see, let me try to delete this interface itself. Okay, yeah, now you can see that network interface. So now it has been deleted. Now let's go and try to delete this VPC itself. Refresh, click on this one and click on delete. Okay, if you encounter these kind of errors, you know, it's, uh, it's always a good practice. Just wait for some time because uh, this, you know, because of some issues it could happen that the resources are not does not exist that this resource but it is still showing me that it is there okay so see if I click on this network interfaces again as you can see it's not existing okay but still in VPC so I will delete it after some time let me be waiting a couple of minutes then we can do that so friends uh, that's it for today 
please write in the comment section what you felt about this uh, session today and was it useful okay in terms of understanding what is you know we can configure ipv6 ipv4 how we can communicate uh, using ipv6 and in the previous session also we had touch base about the ipv4 and ipv6 concepts so don't forget to uh, like comment and subscribe to my youtube channel it is cloud with mousy uh, thank you so much for your time friends and wish you a great weekend ahead and take care bye bye